Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, press conference with Jared Bowen. Um, as ever, if we can take through a maximum of three questions each, and we'll get around as many as we can. And once again, we'll have a little embargo section at the end. So, Rob, get us underway. Hey, Jared, good to see you. Um, listen, you featured in, in both of England's two opening games, and, w and when you look at the masses of wide attacking talent that there is in this squad, just how big a compliment is that for you? Yeah, it gives you a massive confidence boost as well. Um, I think one of the main things... Um, that especially some of the experienced lads I spoke about is being ready um, for the opportunity because you never know when it's going to come and for me, like I said, I think when we spoke before was, it was an uh, honour to play for your country in the first place but to do it at a major tournament as well um, is another thing and the, the two games have been you know, really good tests for me to come in and you know, winning the first game to you know, help defend the lead, try and make an impact and I think that's the, the main thing you can do when coming off the bench is bringing that energy that I know I can bring, that freshness, um, and also trying to make an impact in the, the later stages of the game. So for me, yeah, it's been a real confidence booster, and to be in both of the games is a really proud moment for me as well. It feels like there's a lot of negativity around in the media and, and, and maybe with some of the England fans as well after those first two performances. Is that a bit harsh when you've, you're still unbeaten? And I wonder what the mood's like in the camp. Yeah, no, mood's, mood's really high and um, you, know, you try not to get, get involved in the outside world because you know, what we've got is a real tight group, a real togetherness and like you said, we're, we're sat here with four points and it's probably the standards that we've set that you know, it's, it's not two wins, um, but it's still four points, we're still top of the group and we're still in control um, of our own destiny and we go with Tuesday's game, win that and then you know, we're, we're going into the, to the knockouts but you know, there's a lot to get to, get to that win, you know, they're, they're a really good side, um, a lot of respect to them and I think every game is so different, you know, it's my first tournament but you know, the teams that you come up against all pose different threats and you know, Serbia were very you know, direct, um, had a lot of crosses in the box and Denmark were a lot more technical I thought um, but again it's I guess that's tournament football um, and the teams were really good opposition so we know Tuesday would be a difficult game but we know what we have to do and you know we're calm about it um, you know we're not sat here with two games two losses bottom of the group we're like I said still in a really good position so looking forward to the game Tuesday I think. The manager said that the squad generally has some fitness issues uh, and, and two vital players in Jude Bellingham and Harry Kane seem to be struggling a little bit. Um, how worried should we be about where those two are at right now? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be worried. Um, you know, you're coming off the back of a really big season. Um, the games that we've had are quite... I think it was four days after the Serbia game that we played the other night as well. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's challenging for everyone. I think everyone was you know, out on their feet, especially after the second game as well, that quick turnaround of the games. And like I said, that's when it's important that everyone's ready for their opportunity because you never know what's gonna, when it's going to come. And you know, everyone's in a, in a good place. Um, you know, they're just running a lot, so probably, probably tired. But um, no, every, everyone's in a good place and I feel like everyone's ready um, when needed. Jared, hi. Henry Winter. Um, that was your 50th game for club and country the other night. You played more than 4,000 minutes this season, 69 hours. How have you kept so fresh physically and mentally? Probably the twins keeping me, keeping me busy and away from football. But um, no, I just enjoy playing football, know what works for my body in terms of recovery. Um, probably been more disappointed this season. I've had a couple of little knocks that have stopped me for a couple of games, so I could have played more. Um, and for me, it's... Of course, playing football is difficult, but you're doing something that you love. So for me, it's just I want to play every game that, that I can. Um, so getting myself, getting myself ready, knowing what works for my body through my career that I've done. And yeah, just always been available for the games. But like I said, probably more disappointed that I've missed a couple through little, little injuries. Just looking at the other games out here, there's a lot of high intensity pressing from the teams that are doing well. C can you sort of explain how England press? Because it has been a bit of a debate. Yeah, no, I think it's, um, you know, the games that we've had, especially the first game, um, Serbia were, you know, like I said before, very direct, uh, went forward and we knew that, you know, if we maybe stepped on a bit too much, you know, the second balls, we'd leave ourselves open, you know, in the middle of the pitch. So, you know, I think it's finding the right balance. I um, mean, I think in games we've done, Deck done one the other day when he won the ball back on the edge of the box. Um, and it's just finding the right moments and the right, the right balance to go because, like you said, it's challenging to press for 90 minutes. I don't think any team can do that. Um, but it's picking the moments. And as soon as you win the ball back a couple of times, uh, high up the pitch, the opposition will then, you know, they might go longer, 
or you know they might think again about trying to play out from the back when you get that success from it. But you know, not all the time you're not going to get success. But it's about sticking with it. And you know, when we do win the ball back in the dangerous positions like we done the other night. Hi, Jared. Faye from Talk Sport. Are you okay? Good, thank you. Good. Um, suggestions from both Declan Rice and Gareth Southgate that maybe some of the players are almost trying too hard and care too much. Do, do, do you see that? Um, I think it's difficult to say care too much because, you know, you're playing for a country at a tournament. Of course, you want to put everything into the game. But, you know, I think it's important to find that balance of, yes, you want to be hyped up for the game, but not too much where your emotions can kind of boil over. Um, and then, you know, not the other end of the spectrum where, you know, you're too calm and, and too chilled on the pitch. So I think it's about finding, finding that balance um, in terms of being calm, being ready. Um, and I think we've got that in the changing room a lot. And, you know, I think... The first game was, you know, we put everything into that to win that game. I think we spoke about in the build-up of that, winning that first game, getting off to a good start. And, you know, we wanted to, to win the second game as well. Of course we did. Um, but in the end, we, we, we took the point. Um, and like I said, it's, it's all, for, all for Tuesday now. We're in a really good position. And, you know, I've been a, a fan of England. This is my first major tournament. I remember watching the last Euros and the World Cup. We were sat with four points after two games. So, you know, it's not... It's the same position as, as before. It's, you know, calm, calm minds around the camp. You know, players have been here longer than, than some players, know what it takes. And you know, I think the main message is, you know, we're, we're calm, um, we're ready, and we look forward to the challenge on Tuesday. What's your message to the fans? Because there does seem to be a bit of a split. Obviously, the performances haven't been how you would have wanted them, and everybody has come out and said, we can do better than this. There's a split between the fans who are being reasonable, saying top of the group and four points, and the others saying this is not good enough. What, what message do you have for them? No, listen, I, I get it as well, um, you know, because you want to you win the games and you want to be in the best position possible. But, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's not as easy as that. And, you know, the support here is, like I, like I said before, it's my first tournament, so it's my first time seeing, you know, England at a major tournament with the fans and the following that it is. And, you know, for me, it's, you know, one of the best. And, yes, we're disappointed that we haven't won the game. But I think, like I said before, those are the standards that we've set. We want to win these games. We want to win as many games as possible. Um, but... You know, it's not given to you as easy as that. Um, there's always a process that goes into the game, you know, the build-up, getting to the game and then dealing with the game when we get there. So I think it's probably just a mix of that we've set such high standards that, you know, it's not... We don't expect to win every game because I think that's, you know, a bit of an arrogance. But, you know, we're always confident in our, our own ability to win. But my message with your fans, we've keep sticking with it, keep showing the support that you have done, because um, for me to experience it has been you know, incredible. Um, so for me is stick with it and we'll see you on Tuesday. Just one final question. Um, just wondering from a psychological point of view, the mentality has been brought into question a, a couple of times, especially with a lot of the younger players. And I understand that there is no specific psychologist in, in camp. So how do you make sure, you know, what, what do you do at West Ham versus what you do at, at, in England? Do you need somebody to to bring that balance that you talked about? No, because I think the balance that we've got, like I said, there's some players, m myself included, it's their first major tournament, and you've got players that have done five or six. So, you know, it's a real real good balance. And, you know, you go through challenges every week at your club level. Yes, it's, you know, you know for your country, um, and it may be different. But for me, it's you know, still the same challenges um, with opposition, the build-up to games, the pressure of it. But I think play we've been playing long enough now to understand what it takes and what it takes to play for your country and represent your country at a major tournament. Um, so for me, the, the guys that have been here um, a longer time have been really supportive of that. And, you know, if you ever need a conversation, you know, you can always have a quick conversation. Um, but yeah, like I said, we've been players playing at the, you know, the highest level. Um, so you know what it takes to win. Uh, you know, I feel like we're a team of winners and we, we want to win and really want to achieve something. Um, so, like I said, it's finding that balance of having players that have experienced it um, to maybe help the players that you know haven't experienced it before. But I think it's a really good balance balance to have as well. Hi, I'm David with Gazzetta in Italy. Um, you mentioned this is your first tournament. I'm curious, what, are you, what sorry, what have you learned so so far about the experience? How much the experience is making you better? No, I've just enjoyed every minute of it um, and I'll continue to keep, keep enjoying it. Like I said before, to, to play for your country, for just getting one cap was something and then, you know, to do it um, in front of the, the England fans, you know, England away um, was really special. So for me, it's learning, you know, every day, every day we're on the training pitch. Like I said before, every opposition has a different game plan. There's different, you know, 
challenges that go into into the game. Um, so for me, it's of course I've enjoyed it. I think you've got to enjoy it with your, your first tournament, um, but you've also got to be be ready when your opportunity comes when you step foot on the pitch. Did you did you expect to have this massive pressure, uh, pressure of uh, trying to win over and over again? And how are you uh, handling? I think as a player, you want to win every game that you play. That's, you know, for, for me, I've done that since I was four years old and I started playing football. And you know, I'm still the same person now, still got that winning mentality of wanting to win. And when you play for your club level, you want to win. Um, you know, you want to get as many points as possible in your domestic league. So for me, I don't think it's, it's pressure in that way. I think it's you want to take it on head first. You want to take that responsibility on. You want to take that, that honour to play for your country. So for me, it's just, yeah, taking it on. You obviously have a different role with England than with West Ham. You're a starter with West Ham, uh, back up so far here. How do you prepare for games if you do something differently? I just prepare exactly the same. Um, I've always done it, even when, you know, at West Ham when I haven't started a game. I still prepare as if I'm you know, playing the game because when you, if you do come on the pitch, you have to be ready and you have to have your preparation exactly the same. So for me, that's, you know, that's what, what has worked for me. So that's what I'll you know, keep doing um, moving forward. Okay, we have James Ollie next, and then back to Jerry Lawton. Hi, Jared. Um, the manager's talked about um, some of the players who haven't been to a tournament before, maybe being surprised by just the level of scrutiny around the team. It's obviously, as you say, your first tournament. I mean, how have you found it? Uh, like I said before, I don't. I try not to get caught up in the outside world and try and, you know, that's the same at my club level as well. Um, I think there's scrutiny at club level as well when when you play, and I think. As a player, um, if you want to be a winner, if you want to achieve things, I think you have to shut yourself away from that and focus what you have in the group. And I think that's that's the main message. Is you know, for us as players, is we know what we have um, as as a group. And of course, football is a, a game of opinions, and we know there's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. But you know, it's about sticking together for every single moment. Um, there's going to be disappointment along the way. Um, but like I said at the start, you know, we're calm. Um, we've got a real good togetherness and for me it's just I'm focused on every day on the training pitch, learning um, and then when it comes to a game day if I can get onto the pitch it's about trying to make an impact and playing the football that I know I can do. So for me that's my mindset of dealing with the scrutiny if you say. So you sort of come off social media completely do you? No I'm not off so I haven't deleted my socials but I'm on there but it's you know I've got friends, I've got family on there, um, you know, of course it's, I think you can get caught up. If you want to look for things, you can look for things. But for me, I don't want to look for things, so I'm not going to look for things. Do you sort of encourage some of the other players to maybe do the same, just like just ignore it for a month? Yeah, but I think, you don't know, I'm not, we're not sat next to each other on our phones. We've tried to be a little bit more sociable than, than that. Um, but I think every player is different. Every player's got a way of doing it. And, of, of course, if you know, it's affecting them, then you can say, listen, there's no point looking at that. Um, but like I said, you don't fully know if p people are looking... All, all day, every day. You don't know that. Um, but, you know, if it was me saying to the lads, I'd say, just try and stay away from it, stay on the right, the right mindset for what we want to achieve in this tournament. And how bad was the pitch the other day? I mean, without sort of making excuses, it looked pretty bad to play. Yeah, I thought I broke my ankle for the first two minutes when I came on. But, um, yeah, it was definitely difficult. Um, you know, it's not, not, not an excuse in the slightest, but, you know, it was something that... I think Walks had a couple in the first 10 minutes where he, you could kind of see the chunks of grounds coming up. Um, a bit like bad divots if you're at a bad golf shot. It was a bit like that. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was difficult. Um, and I think the roof was closed as well because of the weather, which made it you know, a lot more hotter in there as, as well. Um, but those are the things that you have to, you know, that get forced to you sometimes. You, you know, you play the conditions of the pitches. Um, you know, it's still a great stadium, great pitch. Um, just the other day, it was probably cutting up a little bit more than what we've probably experienced from, from the first game before that. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to use that as a, you know, an excuse for the, for the game. What happened with your ankle? Was it, did you turn on it and you thought... Yeah, I just um, probably running a bit too fast for my brain and tried to turn around and just kind of got my foot stuck and I thought, oh, no, I'm in trouble here. But luckily got, got away with it. But it was just one of those pitches that, you know, you can kind of get your get your foot caught in the, in the ground and it'll come up against you. But luckily, I survived. Psychologically, that must be quite difficult, though. You just come on and then within two minutes, you think, hang on, this surface, I can't trust it. You know? Yeah, no, it definitely makes you think, you know, you're not sprinting. Um, you're going to slow down a little bit before you get to the target where you are. But, um, yeah, it was a, certainly a, a welcomer to the game for me to, to sprint after the ball and, 
yeah, nearly twist my ankle out of place, but um, no, like I said, all, all good. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Lawson. And Eric. Hi, Jared. Hi, mate. I've got a mic. I'm okay. Uh, uh, good luck on Tuesday. Thank uh, you. We've seen Danny in the crowd giving you great support. Could you just talk about the support she gives you and what, what is it? What, what does she tell you? Does she give you any instructions or is it just a bit of love? And... Yeah, no, I mean, she's not telling me tactically what to do. She ain't got a clue. <laughs> um, but no, Danny, my mum, my dad, my sister, my brother, my two mates have all, have all been out here. Um, and like I said, it's my first tournament. So for them to come and, you know, see me representing my country at a major tournament is um, for them probably the pinnacle um, so yeah, Dan has Dan has been great with you know, travelling in and out, um, back home to Germany, back again, getting back late. Um, obviously, I'm sure everyone's heard the story of my dad in the camper van. So um, he's doing all the hours up the uh, I don't know if they're motorways in Germany. I don't know if that's the right word, but um, driving up there, the four of them. So all of them that have come out have been yeah really supportive. But yeah, like I said, no tactical info from Danny. Has he turned up in the camper van at the hotel? What, my hotel? Your hotel. No, I can't get close to that. Um, <laughs> no, he's just been... I don't know where he's been, to be honest. He just kind of parks it up somewhere. I said take the England flags down just in case it gets... You know, the windows might get put through if you, <laughs> the wrong fans come across it. Um, but no, it's definitely been... They've enjoyed it. It's been uh, long days for them, but with four of them, they can all kind of drive along the way and take turns in driving. Um, I think my, my brother fell out by the time they were five minutes up the road. Um, so you can imagine they've got, I don't know how many hours, and they've already fallen out. So, um, But no, it's a, like I said, it's um, for me representing my country at a tournament and then for them to come and do it that way, the way they're doing it, is um, really special for them as well. And what about father-in-law? He's not, he's not, he's not known for a man to, uh, to resist the tackle on his TV and uh, Hollywood career. Uh, a massive England fan. What advice has he given you about the tournament and specifically perhaps about Tuesday? No, no again, no, no kind of advice. You know, that, that's not the kind of route that you know, people close to me go down. It's just more you know, enjoy it, do what, you, do what you've been doing um, and play with a smile on your face. And that's been the same thing. Um, always gives me a message of good luck before a game, um, which is really nice. And I don't know if he's coming out to the games or not. I'm not sure what his uh, schedule's doing. Um, hopefully he's not on the pitch. I see him two foot to someone the other day in soccer aid. Um, <laughs> but no, I, like I said, nothing in terms of advice and you know how to not how to play football, but you know in terms of the game, it's just more good luck and in, enjoy the game. And that's you know him and my whole family as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, pass across to Eric there, and then we'll go Pierre. Hi, Jared. Eric Peters, Bill Germany. <laughs> So, um, how important will it be for England to finish top of the group to avoid a possible clash against Germany in the round of 16? <laughs> It'll be good for the, the spectators, I'm sure. But um, no, we know what, what we have to do. We, you know, we're kind of in control of the destiny of the group. Um, and you know, every game that we play, we want to win. It's not about you know trying to avoid teams. You know, to be the best and to be winners, you have to you have to beat the best. So, you know, for us, it's wanting to win every game. So the game Tuesday, we go there wanting to win that game. Of course, you know, I don't think it would be ever in our mindset to you know say we're playing for a draw. Um, for us, we're like I said before, a, a group of of winners. I truly believe that. Um, and we go to Tuesday um, with the mindset to win the game and you know, then the knockout stage, football take care of itself, who you play against. Can you say something about um, the atmosphere here in Germany? So are you satisfied with that? Yeah, no, very satisfied with the, with the atmosphere. I think it's, um, it's really good. You know, the Denmark game the other day, all their you know, red T-shirts behind the goal. Um, it was some, some spectacle. Um, and obviously the England fans as, away, travelling as well, have been loud as anything. So, yeah, it's been a really good atmosphere as, you know, at the stadiums. Thanks, Eric. And we'll finish the live section with Pierre. Hello, <clears throat> I'm Pierre from French Newspaper L'Equipe. Uh, just one question about your hotel. <laughs> Do okay. you enjoy it? And it looks like a bit isolated. And I was wondering, in which extent does it help you maybe to be far from the external noise and to focus on competition? Yeah, really Thank important. You. And that's, you know, what I think the managers try to do. Keep it, you know, try and keep it homely. Um, you know, and then when it's down to the training pitch, it's about this is this is work time, and I kind of have that split of you know this is for you know your re relaxation and chill out time, and then when it's down to the training pitches, it's work time. So you know that's been working really well for us, and yeah, it's been a lovely stay so far. Thanks. Sorry, one more in the live section at the back. Hi, Charles. Iran Romero from Spain for El Mundo. Um, are you watching the rest of the of the tournament? Uh, 
which teams do you think are doing better? And especially, what do you think about the Spanish team? And if uh, Jude has told you something about it, thank you. I thought you'd ask about Spain because um, they're doing so well. But no, there's been uh, lots of really good sides that have you know, started really well. I think Germany and you know, their country as well have started really well. Um, there's a couple of underdogs that you know, I've been really impressed with. Turkey played the other day and I thought that was... Turkey against Georgia was just all out war and I thought it was brilliant to, uh, to watch. So, um, you know, there's been lots of teams um, that have started really well, but, you know, it's, it's still early days. We're two days in, two games in, sorry. Um, so lots more opportunities for games to come up. But, yeah, of course, Spain are, Spain are doing well. I'm sure that's why you asked the question. OK, we'll end the live section there. We'll now move on to a very short section of bargain until 10.30pm UK time this evening. And Mike, do you want to grab the mic if... Can the mics around? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hi, Jared. Um, in the last couple of days, what, what's Gareth's kind of message to you and the and the squad been when you when you met together as a as a team? Obviously, he was he said himself that there was that it was disappointing and that a lot to improve on. Yeah, same same message. Um, you know, we always have a debrief of the game. Um, but yeah, more disappointing, but. You know, we're, like I said before, we're still sat here with four points top of the group. Um, and like I said, those are the standards that have probably been set over the years of wanting to win, win as many games as possible. But, you know, it's not as always, always as easy as that, especially in tournament football with some of the, you know, the quality of the teams that we played against. Um, but, yeah, it's just more of a calm mindset. Um, we, know, we know what to do. We know what's needed. So for us, it's, you know, putting the two games that we've had behind us now because they're done um, and looking forward to Tuesday's, Tuesday's challenge. Hi, Jared. Um, you won a European trophy last year under a manager who a lot of your own fans were, what were saying was negative tactically. Now you're in the same position where Gareth's getting a lot of flack for being tactically negative. Are either of those two managers negative? Do they ever tell you to sit back on one nil leads and all this kind of narrative we, we keep hearing from ex-players and stuff on telly? No, and, you know, again, it's that other part of, you know, the footballing world that, you know, football's a game of opinions and there's, you know got to speak about the England game um, and I get it but you know as both managers that I've had really um, have been really solid without the ball and I think that's the best thing because you know don't concede the goals the quality that you know talking from West Ham level and here as well that, that you have um, you know you can win the games um, so for me when I hear when I was at West Ham and I used to hear it it was you know frustrating you know for me um, because two two great managers as well um, as people and achieved so much. You know, I'm going back to the same points because I feel you know, I've achieved so much at West Ham and done you know, quite well at England as well. So, so for me, it's not frustrating, maybe the wrong word, maybe a bit too strong. Um, but I always think you stop the ball out of your goal, you've got many more chances with the quality that we've got going forward to win those games. Um, so I don't think there's no, no harm in that. Just naive to, to, naive to say that 